Right, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the uh, starter. I've uh, already cleaned all this up and put all the gears back in and uh, cleaned this up. Dressed up all the, uh, the brushes in there. Uh, went ahead and uh, painted some of the parts that, uh, uh, you know, will get corroded after I cleaned them up. And uh, when you go to put the uh, starter back in, there's a little thrust BB right here that actually goes down in this hole. And what that's for is so when the uh, uh, starter bangs it back and forth a little bit, it can still spin or pivot on this little ball bearing here. So don't forget to put that back in there with some grease. So uh, I've got this all cleaned up real nice now. Uh, the bearing was fine, so I'm not going to replace it. Uh, so I'm going to use some just regular uh, premium high temp grease. Uh, up in this uh, up in this little cup here, there's a little bit of grease in there. That grease is not actually to grease the bearing. That's a heat transfer grease. So I'll still put some of this on it, but I won't put a lot. I'll put just enough to make sure that uh, it gets good contact so the uh, bearing doesn't get overheated on the end of the uh, ro rotator here. So uh, let me go ahead and start putting this together, and I'll show it to you. Okay, I got some uh, grease in there finally. Uh, I just squished it around in there. Then all you have to do is uh, get your little BB. Drop your uh, BB in your hole. I used a screwdriver. Throw a screwdriver in there. Bink. All right. Then you can take this. And this isn't going to be put on permanently now. It's just being put on just to turn the gears. So you can see. So I'll stick them in there. Rotate them around. Make sure you got plenty of grease in there. It doesn't have to be overflowing, but you want a little bit of grease in there. So let's pull it back out. <laughs> the gears are sticking to it. Let me uh, hold the gears down while I pull it out, otherwise the gears will come out. Okay, I got it out. Make sure your ball bearing isn't on your tip. Make sure it stays down in there, and I, you can see it down in there. all this and squish it down in there real good okay uh, after you get that grease all up in there and you get your ball bearing in there and you got it spun around a little bit there's a little uh, dampener that goes on here uh, this goes in here right there just squish it all the way around it'll, it'll sit down you just got to play with it a little bit and then it'll, it'll go down so, let me get it in there real quick oh there it goes where it go. You just gotta play with it. It 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 will go down. Okay. Yeah, I just had to like squish it off to the side a little bit. Okay, once that's done, then you can go ahead and uh put this on there. Once you get that done, make sure your ball bearing is in there. Then you can grab your uh your rotor here, set it in there, just turn it and it'll drop. There you go. And the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to go ahead and install this. Uh, what you do is you install it one side and squish these in. And then with two fingers, two hands, you push these aside. Well, you kind of wiggle it a little bit and be gentle with it. Because these are brittle and they'll break or chip. So, and make sure this is clean. Uh, I, I usually use a paper towel and put a little bit of brake clean on it and just uh, wipe up and go all the way around so let me get that done real quick and then uh, then we'll go to putting this on okay i got this all wiped down uh, i didn't show you guys but i actually have this kind of like on a well i don't know what it is a kool-aid or a lemonade thing or whatever and what it does is it, it uh, helps this sit sit straight up and down so it makes it a little uh, easier to deal with i just kind of wiggle it until it sits in there flat like that boom okay uh, when you go to put the uh, the actual uh, uh, center hub on here don't know what the real name is for it. Uh, there's a little bump right there and that goes in this keyway right here so make sure you get that in there so let's go ahead and put this on oh I had this on once already I took it off so let me get the grease off of this so it doesn't end up on my brushes okay I got that cleaned up a little bit of hair in there sorry about that 
uh, this bump right here goes in there. So let's uh, get this over the top here. And bring it down. Watch your uh, guide there. And then you'll see this actually wants to push up. So you got to, you have to get two sides on and then use your fingers to knock the other sides or push the other sides over. So they'll go on. So let me get that on and I'll show it to you. Okay, the first thing you have to get it past, <clears throat> sorry about that. The first thing you have to get it past is the bearing. And then once you get past the bearing, then you can cock it to one side and go around the uh, commentator or whatever it is, armature, whatever. So let's, uh, you'll need a couple of fingers to do that. So I need both hands. So let me get to it. Okay. Uh, what I did is I rocked it to one side, got one side in, then got this side in, then leaned it over and got this side in, and pushed my finger over and got the other side in. Now you have to make sure that you twist this, pick it up maybe slightly, and just drop it in there, and then boom, it'll set in. Now you can uh, go ahead and push this down the rest of the way. And make sure that uh, all your clips and everything are sitting up high all the way around. And make sure everything looks clean and not rubbing or anything. It looks good. All my brushes are sitting in there nice. Okay, then you can go ahead and put your cap on. Now this cap, you have to have a little bit of grease in the bottom. The grease isn't actually to grease the bearing. The grease is for heat transfer on this to the shield, which is this part. So... Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of grease because you don't want to get down here in your brushes, but it's got to be enough to where it will uh, make contact with that bearing. Now there's two two guide uh, veins, I guess you'd call them, and they go in, in these holes here, one here, one here. When you go to put this on, uh, you have to make sure that the screw holes match up with the screw holes here. Also, uh, there's, there's a bottom and a top to the starter. These two bolts right here with the solenoid off to the left is the bottom. So you have to make sure that this little hole right here is uh, lined up with this drainage hole here. So when you go to put that on, uh, make sure the, the drain hole is down and then find your screw hole which is right here and then watch your screw hole here and set it in and then wiggle it a little bit side to side and it should find its way down and it did now you can go ahead and put your screws in but before you do that you need some blue loctite now when you go buy loctite uh, from an automotive store it comes in blue tubes one will say red loctite on it or red lock red and the other one will say blue well mine's worn off so if you're not sure the easiest way to tell if you have you know you have red and blue just pop the cap and you'll see blue <laughs> not the cap but, uh, not the case but the uh, the thread log and I put a little couple little dots right here so you can see well I'll just put a couple on here on these screws just a little bit right there you don't need a lot just a little bit That's all you need just a little bit boom all right and you can take these and go ahead and put them in your holes and they're number two Phillips by the way oh. That's a blade. Where'd my Phillips go? There it is. There, number two Phillips. Just tweak them down. Grab my other one. Stick it on there. And what this will do is it'll keep it from coming out during vibration. And when you go to take these off, <laughs> Boy, they're fun. You can see there's like little bumps and stuff on these. Well, what that is, is that's some vice grips we had on there. And then I had another pair of vice grips on this one. And then I had this chucked up in the vise. 
And what I did is I had somebody hold this and I used both vice grips and turned it at the same time with the screwdrivers and it came off. Now, if you have an impact screwdriver, you could probably get them off. The only thing is, is this is aluminum and you start hitting this with an impact screwdriver, eh, you might break it. So I prefer to do this method. But unless you're just hitting real gentle with it like but that kind of defeats the purpose of an impact screwdriver oddly enough that's one tool i don't have is an impact screwdriver so let's get my uh lid back on here so i don't dry out or leak it all over all right let me get these snug down right here real quick all right i got them snug down now i can go ahead and uh, put my long screws in that go all the way down uh, here, I'm going to put some blue uh, thread lock on that too. So let me get that. Put these over here so I can get to them. There we go. We don't need a lot. Just, whoop, wrong one. See, that's red. Don't want that being permanent. Let's get to the blue over here. There we go. Let's put some blue on there. Don't need a lot. Oh, that's good. That's all we need. All right, let's get this in here. And I believe these are 10 millimeters. And I didn't bring my 10 millimeters, so let me go grab that real quick. All right, I got my trusty little stubby here to uh, put things in. This is just a uh, gray engine enamel by plastic coat, by the way. The paint that I put on it. I, I like engine paint. It dries fast and it dries hard and it stands up to the temperature. These don't have to be super tight. They just need to be snugged up. That's pretty much all you need. Okay. And uh, let me show you. Here it is. The duplicator. Duple color, uh, engine enamel, 500 degree stuff. I like this stuff. It dries real fast. It goes on good. And I even think they've got an anti-fisheye uh, grease uh, stuff in it too. So if you make a mistake and you got just a little bit of grease on there, uh, it'll still fill in just fine. Let me snug those up a little bit with two hands. All right, I got them snugged up. I guess I should... Uh, put my lids on here let me get that done real quick okay I got my uh, caps back on one thing about this once you put this housing on and you get the brushes on and you get this screwed down you're committed to uh, putting these in if you try to pull this back off the brushes will come off again so make sure you have this where you need it uh, before you go ahead and tighten up the last two. Because once once you're done, you, you'll have to you don't have to take the brushes out, but you've got to clean the grease off the bearing again and reset it again. And uh, the only reason I know that's because I made that boo boo. So I'm telling you guys so you don't have to. So anyways, next thing we need to do is uh, go ahead and. Get the solenoid and get it on there okay i set this up against the vise here so that uh it would make it a little bit easier to install here's your solenoid right now your solenoid has two term big terminals and one little terminal the little terminal goes towards this over here and there is a uh, a square uh, hole in this shaft and that square hole goes over this arm right here. And what that arm does, I don't know if it'll show it, but it activates uh, your starter uh, output there. So that goes on there. And then there's uh, two screw holes, two screws that hold this in and they go in here and here. So you'll have to line those up as well. They go in here like this. So once you get those lined up, uh, They'll go on. Now you want to use uh, some more blue Loctite on this because 
This thing's got to be vibrating back and forth when you go to start your vehicle, clunk, clunk. And you don't want them coming loose. Uh, it is a number three Phillips screwdriver. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There it is. I just used my Craftsman 41297 to do it. I don't use the number three very often, but occasionally I do. So, <clears throat> and then you'll have to put this on here. Now this one, actually when I went to take this off, uh, spun around and it broke the center guard piece off here. So if you if you have one that's like this, <clears throat> I highly recommend that you pay real close attention to putting these on. Now, if for whatever reason they touched, the starter would engage and run continuously. It would just bzz, just keep running until the battery drain. So I mean, it's not like it's going to short out or anything but it would just continue to run. Uh, this right here is what activates the plunger down here. This is your uh, solenoid activation. This is your battery terminal. And this is your terminal that goes to the starter. And the negative is provided by ground by touching the transmission case and by these uh, bolts over here that I painted. And of course, I'll rub the paint off of off of them and they have lock washers and also when they go in the holes they'll uh, they'll strip the paint off too but I'll, I'll strip the paint off the very edges here just to make sure they have good contact so with that being said let me go ahead and get some red loctite on here and uh, get these screwed in here for you I actually said red loctite didn't I I meant blue loctite uh, now that I've got this sitting down sideways so I can get the screws in here, I wanted to show you, if you have that thing engaged, you can tell by pulling on it right here. So, I just wanted to show that to you. Let me get those screws in here now. And, uh, uh, I'll need two hands for that, but I'll get them started for you and I'll show you me screwing them down. Okay, I got them started. You just kind of pick up on this and twist a little bit until they go in. If you've done automobile mechanics, you, you know... <laughs> You're well familiar with that technique. So I mean, you just screw them in. There we go. Now I'll get them snugged up. Hold on. All right, I got it up in the vise now. So now I'm just going to... Give it a good reef. <clears throat> Notice I put a rag down there to protect my pretty paint job. <laughs> okay. Let me get some vice grips on this thing and uh, give it a good reef off camera. Okay, this is kind of the technique I use. I just grab it there and then put my hand up on top and twist them both at the same time. And it works pretty good. Alright, now I got that done. Pull it back out of the vise. Set it down here, and then you have to connect this item up here. And I got it standing up, and I'll set it back in my little tub here. She's a little off center now, I guess. And then I'll get this up, uh, get this up on here. There we go. I don't know if I can do this one hand or not. We'll see. Guess not. <laughs> Okay, I just laid that over there. Now this goes on here, like this. And you snug it up. Okay, I'm getting ready to snug it up. It's a uh, 17 millimeter, by the way, at least for my starter. Um, make sure you don't have your jacket, uh, insulation jacket, up underneath there. And make sure everything's cleaned up. And I already did that. So let me get this tightened down. Okay, I put it back in the vise again. Uh, using my plywood soft jaws. I really like those things. So I just get this snugged up here. There we go. And make sure that this does not touch the case. Because the case is ground and the wire is hot. You know, once this is energized, once that ener is energized, there's a copper button that sits in here and it goes up and it contacts both these posts, which connects the positive battery lead to the starter lead, 
goes into the starter <clears throat> up through the brushes and out through the case into the transmission uh, case mount engine mount and then through the frame back to the negative lead on the battery so, so anyways uh, let me get this snug down I, I think I can do it like this here we go and this doesn't have to be super duper tight just tight enough now this is starting to lean up against here so i'm going to use two hands to make sure it stays there i might get like some vice grips or something uh on there this is because this is starting to lean up here so let me take care of that all right i had to pull it back off because i forgot to check to see if this nut was tight down here and it wasn't so after i tightened it up it was kind of flopping around in here so make sure you tighten that back up uh, when you're when you're getting ready to do it, I reached over to grab my uh, socket, and it's a 17 millimeter deep socket I used to tighten that up. So let me get the uh, cable back on here again. There we go. And then get the nut on there. It's over here on the bench. So let's get this done. And to keep this from turning, you can either put something back here or you can put a big wrench on here if you can get it around this. So I usually put something back here. So when I turn it, it doesn't swivel over into the uh, over into the case. Let's see, maybe I got a stick. Maybe that'll work. Brush stick there. Oh, where's my uh 17 millimeter. Ah, here it is. Let me get this set up. It's giving me problems. Okay, to keep this from uh, rotating over into the case, uh, you can just put a stick in there or uh, use another wrench or something to, to sit back here to keep that from spinning around and make sure they're snugged up pretty good. I mean, they don't have to be like grunt type but they need to be pretty tight uh the next one is uh these go on uh when you put the uh starter in the car so probably do that tomorrow uh this pretty much ends this tutorial on how to tear down uh your starter and clean the brushes and commentator up and stuff like that uh, i made this as a separate video uh, because it was just going to take too long initially i was just going to change the starter out but the starter i got didn't fit it was a two hole instead of a three hole like this one so <clears throat> i had to do that i had to open this up and clean it up and uh, take care of the brushes and the commentator and, and all that stuff and just make sure everything was was good enough for it to go back in the truck and if it works great i'll run it until it dies if not if it's still giving me problems hard starting and it's not the batteries, I've already checked them. Uh, if that turns out to be that, then uh, I'll go ahead and replace the unit. But this is uh, the cheapest way I could do it at this point. Um, so, but if you're, you know, if you're out in an area or you got to have your uh, truck and you don't have time to wait for a starter, or there's none around or whatever, you can take this apart and clean it all up and put it back together. And uh, yeah, for, for me, it's about a day's worth. You know, tearing it, tearing it down and everything and taking it out of the truck, putting it back together. But uh, some of you guys may be quicker at it. I, I don't know. I don't do this for a living. I do this because I have to. <laughs> it's all I can really afford. So, well, y'all have a good one. I'll talk with you later. Uh, I'll show another video of me installing this in the truck as uh, part two of uh, uh, changing the starter in the 03 or 01 uh, F350. Talk with you all later. Hope you enjoyed the video. If uh, if you see a, something better or something I did wrong, please comment. By all means, you know, I take criticism. Uh, if you give me a thumbs down, just tell me why. Uh, that, that's fine. But if you learned something, well, give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if, uh, if you like uh, watching videos like this. And you all have a good one, and I'll chit-chat with you later. Bye-bye.